a, a royal source tells CNN that the king now is back in London. Interesting here, though, that he has started outpatient cancer treatment and has not so far been um, readmitted to hospital. Now, rem remember, Charles, King Charles was at a private clinic, clinic last month to get treatment for an enlarged prostate. It was during that time that doctors noted a, quote, separate issue of concern. Tests then showed it was, in fact, cancer. Buckingham Palace did not say what type of cancer it is. Dr. Megan Ranney is with us. She is the dean of the Yale School of Public Health. And always good to have you on board, especially when we start to hear about this news about someone, uh, of course, who is well known all around the world, but also this brings the details of his diagnosis to a very intimate level, right? Millions upon millions around the world have either gone through this or have family members who have. So help us here, walk us through, through this. He went in for a routine procedure. He does not have prostate cancer, so what could have happened here? How would they have identified what cancer it might be? Yeah, Paula, first and foremost, my heart goes out to King Charles III, the entire royal family, and of course, the people of Britain and the UK. And to me, this highlights just how important it is for all of us to have regular screening and primary care physician visits. Um, what likely happened here is King Charles went in for screening. Uh, it was found that he had an enlarged prostate, probably because of symptoms. Um, as many older men know, as you get older, you sometimes have trouble urinating or you have frequent urination. You have to wake up in the middle of the night. Those are all things that can be either benign prostate enlargement or can be symptoms of something more serious. King Charles then appropriately went on and got further testing to evaluate whether it was something to not worry about, which is what the prostate has ended up being, or if it were cancer. And somehow in that process, it sounds like they found another cancer. Now, of course, we don't know what kind of cancer he has been diagnosed with, but we suspect that it's probably something urologic. So bladder or something else related to the reproductive system or that kind of lower portion of your body. Um, we're all waiting uh, to hear exactly what diagnosis he got. The last part is once a cancer has been diagnosed, you have to figure out, has it spread? And so part of my suspicion is that he had a biopsy or some other screening test a month ago, and since then has likely been having some other testing to try to figure out how advanced the cancer is, which then helps his team to decide what the most appropriate next step is in treatment. You know, he's 75, otherwise in good health. Um, is there any reason, do you believe, that they haven't disclosed what kind of cancer it might be so far? Well, gosh, I'm just relieved that they diagnosed or re released the information that he has cancer at all. Um, the royal family is notoriously reticent to talk about health problems. Um, and so the fact that he's acknowledging cancer, especially today, the day after World Cancer Day, I think is so significant and is a statement about King Charles's commitment to his position, elevating the health and well-being of the people of the United Kingdom. Um, when we're gonna know more, I mean, that's really up to them. He certainly has, in many ways, every right to the privacy that any of us have a right to. Although one would argue that as a monarch, um, perhaps the people of the United Kingdom have a right to know a bit more uh, about him in, in his public facing role. Yeah, as you say, I'm sure everyone wishing him well and giving him a measure of privacy, but he is in fact head of state in not just you know Britain, but in, in other countries across the Commonwealth. You bring up such a good point though, and you are a public health professional. We've been hearing from you about from years now, obviously uh, given what happened in COVID, but now there is that other epidemic, which so many of us feel like it is an epidemic, it's cancer. How important do you believe it is that they continue to be as forthcoming as they can be about the type of cancer and how it was diagnosed? I think it is unbelievably important for two reasons. The first is by being honest about what kind of cancer it is and what sort of treatment he's undergoing, it destigmatizes the diagnosis and treatment, which matters so much. I mean, it wasn't so long ago that doctors and family members would hide the diagnosis of cancer from their patients because it was thought to be a horrible word or a reflection on someone's lifestyle. We know now that, of course, lifestyle like smoking can increase your risk of cancer, but there are also random genetic mutations and just bad luck. So the first part is by talking about it, he destigmatizes it. 
The second part is by being honest, he can hopefully encourage more people to go and get screened. We know that unfortunately rates of screening for cancer have dropped precipitously um, across the United States and the globe, partly due to COVID related health delays, partly because everybody's lives are crazy right now as, as we come out of COVID. But those screenings help us to catch cancer early and thereby help us to prevent progression and literally save lives. So by his talking openly about it, he, hopefully he can get more people screened. Yeah, and it's a good point to raise, lest any of us forget, you know, how compromised healthcare systems have been since the pandemic and the fact that all of us lucky enough to have a healthcare system actually use it. Before I let you go, in terms of advances in treatment here, you know, from everything you've reviewed in the last decade, is this good news? I mean, I know you don't know the kind of cancer, we don't know what the prognosis is, but in general, have, you know, great strides been made in this kind of treatment? Absolutely. And yes, we don't know what kind of cancer it is yet. But if I put on my emergency physician hat, my ER doctor hat, as well as my public health hat, we've made tremendous strides in the last decade, both in diagnosing cancer earlier when we screen for it appropriately with a mammogram, colonoscopy, prostate screening, and so on. And we've also made great strides in terms of the types of treatment we can offer and in terms of life expectancy. We have precision chemo now that goes directly after the genetic mutation that causes cancer. We have ways to combine chemo and surgery and radiation to try to decrease the side effects of treatment and to prolong life. There are a lot of things we can do today that we couldn't have done a decade ago, much less two decades ago. But of course, the first step is getting the diagnosis. Yeah, Dr. Randy, so much good insight there and information. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for being with us.